All right, welcome back to Invest in Play. Today in the garage, we are comparing our Winnebago View 2010 and the Ford F-250 truck with a camper. And we're going to be going over the different categories of differences between them and just seeing how they stack up between each other. So the first category is? Would be the space in the room that we get from one vehicle to the other. And obviously the Winnebago View is a much bigger vehicle, so it has a lot more space. It's quite amazing actually. Um, between the amount of people that we can fit in the view when we're having dinner. Um, the camper though is still pretty impressive. You can still fit a fair number, probably about four around the dinner table. The two tables are pretty comparable, but the view with its space has the advantage of the two swivel seats, which allows you to add two additional people inside. So you can have anywhere from six to eight inside the view comfortably at any given time. Yeah, there's really seating for six because you got four at the dinette yeah. and the two front swivel chairs. Mm -hmm. And that's really comfortable. I mean, short of people standing or uh, just being in other spots. So. That's true, yeah. And, and you can actually sleep six in the Winnebago view where you're, you're kind of at three four if they're small in the truck camper um so the winnebago view when it comes to space and room is definitely hands down um got a lot more of it, it has a ton of storage as well the winner of space room winnebago view winnebago the second is versatility and the versatility is really how you can use the vehicle more than just when you're out on a trip so the first thing with the uh, rv the winnebago uh, it works all right. I mean, you can drive it if you wanted to. It wouldn't be the ideal daily driver vehicle, but you could if you wanted to. It just seems a little strange because you're driving you know, your whole house with you. And you can, you know, do other things with it, but it's, it's really uh, more set up for, you know, traveling, you know, so you're going to be living out of it primarily. The truck, on the other hand, you can easily offload the camper and you have a truck. So the advantage of having a truck, obviously, is you can use the truck bed for your work projects. It's uh, easier to use it as a daily driver if you're choosing to do that because it's uh, just a truck. So I will give the win to the truck and camper for versatility. So the fuelage, fuel mileage between the two vehicles is somewhat comparable and somewhat very different. So the Winnebago View actually averages about 17 miles to the gallon, so it does pretty phenomenal for a vehicle of its size. The truck, on the other hand, we can average 17 miles a gallon without the camper. Once you put the camper on there, we do lose quite a bit of fuel economy. We drop down to an average of 12 miles per gallon, which is is not very impressive overall um, <laughs> it's kind of a bummer it doesn't really matter how uh, conservatively you drive the vehicle it's an average of 12. i mean you can lose more but uh, we definitely don't want to lose more so the winnebago view definitely wins on overall fuel economy yeah and our next category is capability so obviously our winnebago view is modified fairly extensively with the suspension and additional height and the aggressive tires and air compressor and so forth and actually has pretty respectable amount of ground clearance front to back so it's surprisingly uh, capable uh, for what it is so you know if you're driving to trailheads or trying to go for service roads it's not a problem at all however the f-250 actually has a little more ground clearance stock than the winnebago it has a little shorter wheelbase, which is nice. And it also has the ability to modify a lot further. So if we wanted to run, you know, say a 37 inch tire on it, we can definitely do that with the appropriate uh, corresponding modifications. So as far as capability goes, I'm gonna give it to the truck, but a lot of it's gonna depend on how much is spent on modifications. So it's not just uh, a one-to-one -one comparison. And uh, obviously the four-wheel drive in the truck is also yeah. beneficial in certain circumstances. And so overall, I'll definitely give the win to the F-250 in the capability category. So when it comes to comfort between the two vehicles, um, there's a couple of things we took into consideration. Uh, the Winnebago View is 
a very comfortable rig. Uh, one of the things that we really enjoy is the pass through with the vehicle. I didn't really think it was that big of a deal when we had the pop-up camper, but once we actually got the pass through and we started using the view, it's phenomenal. My favorite thing is, is not having to get out of the vehicle. When you're traveling late at night and you come into somewhere that you need to camp, you can just go straight through, as well as you can actually heat the Winnebago while you're driving through the pass-through, and it actually heats up the cabin pretty well so that you can just kind of go to sleep and be comfortable. Um, when it comes to the truck camper, you obviously have to get out of the truck, go back around. You, As for comfort, I would have to say the view again wins. It is a super comfortable rig and it's wonderful and it has a few of those amenities that you really don't know how much you're gonna love until you have them. And they're kind of hard to uh, give up, but it's okay. It's all an exchange it is. about, you know, with between everything. Mm -hmm. So our next category is the boondocking off-grid category. And so that includes a number of categories because to go off-grid, be disconnected from everything, you need a few things to make that happen. One is power, and so a lot of that comes through with the solar systems. And then you have the water systems, and you have the propane, and then you have also just the capacity for storing food and uh, whatnot. So in the water category, uh, the RV has over 60 gallons, 60 gallons of water. That's a lot of fresh water that you can yes. take with you. It has two different tanks and you can use one or both of the tanks. And whereas this truck camper only has 40 gallons, and I say only as if it's not a lot, that's actually a lot for a truck camper. But compared to having 60 gallons, definitely nicer to have the, the additional water capacity. For solar, a lot of the solar just depends on how large your roof area is. And with the RV, we have over 900 watts of solar. And realistically, it could probably go up to 1,000 watts of solar, which is a big solar array and provides a lot of power. So with the truck camper, smaller roof size, it's pretty much maxed out around 700 watts. If you cover pretty much everything and you have no air conditioning and you just you know have it pretty stripped down. So definitely a win for the RV in both those categories. Uh, the next is food. And so food, a lot has to do with the amount of cabinetry space you have as well as the fridge and freezer space. And with, uh, with that, the RV has a massive fridge and a large, really large freezer. And so you can easily carry enough food in there for a month or more for two people, uh, depending on how you eat and how you travel. Um, the RV camper is substantially smaller. Mostly the freezer is uh, microscopic in comparison to the RV. So realistically, you're probably about a, a week max and you're gonna have to be a lot more selective on what you keep cool inside there. So the last is propane. The, the RV has about an 18 gallon uh, tank. And so that's a lot of propane. You can fill it to about 80% capacity. So that means you got about 14 gallons of usable propane. Uh, the truck camper has one 20 pound tank. So that's about uh, four gallons of propane. So that's a massive difference in propane that you can carry with you. So in the boondock off-grid category for extended off-gridness, the RV, definitely the winner. The next category we're gonna talk about is cost. So overall cost of the two vehicles. So the Winnebago View um, probably on the front end looks as if it would be the more expensive of the two vehicles and typically it would be. Um, we did put a ton of upgrades into the Winnebago view uh, with the solar array, increasing the water, changing out the fridge, making it so it can go long term and be off grid for those two weeks at a time. Um, overall the cost of the Winnebago view and the cost of the truck are actually pretty comparable because the cost of if we're looking new to new the truck would win overall with cost. Yep and used as we currently have it, they're about the same. Yeah. So we'll give it a... 50-50 split? Yeah. <laughs> we'll, we'll give it one point for each. <laughs> <laughs> so the next category we have is power and towing. 
And uh, so obviously with an RV, you're gonna have a little less towing capacity just because it's a larger vehicle. Um, so the RV has a tow rating of about 5,000 pounds, depending on how you load the RV itself. And then the truck has a range of tow ability. So the low end of the range is about 13,000 pounds and that's with the 373 axle gears. If you step up to the 430 axle gears, then you can tow around 20,000, actually over 20,000 pounds, which is a lot of weight. So definitely a lot higher tow rating with the truck. The horsepower rating of it is the truck has about 385 horsepower and it has uh, 430 foot-pounds of torque, whereas the RV has with the uh, eco tune on it 230 horsepower and 345 foot pounds of torque now you look at the two and you go well clearly the truck is going to be substantially better because it has you know 385 horsepower versus 230 horsepower you know the truck has 430 foot pounds of torque versus 345 but it's not quite as black and white as that. So the RV being a diesel gets most of its power really down low in the RPM band and it provides that torque really through most of the RPM band. So as far as usability and drivability of it, the RV is surprisingly good for the numbers, a lot better than what the numbers would suggest. However, if you're just going to run them wide open throttle in a drag race, the truck is going to win and it would probably win either way. It's just going to be a little higher RPM to do that. And obviously the truck wins for the towability. So I would say the truck is the solid winner, truck and camper in the power towing. So the last category that we have is the drivability and the ability to park the vehicles. So. Um, surprisingly, we were surprised by this, that the truck and camper is actually not that much shorter uh, than the RV. One of our hopes was is that we could get substantially shorter. The truck is actually about 23 and a half feet long with the camper on it, and the RV is only 24 and a half feet long. So one foot. We, we got <laughs> one foot, which was kind of surprising and a little disappointing. Um, the other thing that we were really surprised about is the height of it, um, they're actually very comparable in height. So unfortunately, we were hoping to get a lot shorter. It's not quite as short as we would like. We learned over the summer that when you take ferries with the vehicles, once you get over a certain amount of feet, they actually measure you per foot and it's quite expensive, which is one of the reasons why we were hoping to get a little bit more Ninja. As for drivability of the two vehicles, the Ford F-250 actually drives very, very well. Um, I figured it would feel huge, kind of does. Um, it feels the way a full-size truck would feel. It doesn't feel like a car. And then when you have the camper on it, surprisingly, you don't feel the weight nearly as much with the truck. So it feels heavy, but it doesn't feel as heavy as I would have expected it. Um, the Mercedes Sprinter van, on the other hand, the Winnebago, um, is surprisingly amazing. It's actually really fun to drive. It feels a lot similar to a van and it handles like a van. You'd have no idea that you were driving a full-blown RV. I know it's only 20 and a half, 24 and a half feet long, so it's not as if you're having a 40-foot diesel pusher or a Class A, but it does drive very, very well and very comfortably. So between the two, I would say that the Winnebago View is the winner for me personally. It's just a very super comfortable vehicle to drive. And because the two are about the same size, they have a lot of similarities in their being able to park. However, there is one other thing that the view has, surprisingly, that the truck doesn't. The turning radius on the truck is 53 feet, which is pretty Huge. substantial. It's yeah. pretty big. And the Winnebago is 47, so it actually turns tighter than the truck. Which is crazy, because the wheelbase is 10 inches longer yes. on the RV. So, so just goes to show how much tighter the, tr the wheels will turn on that thing. Yeah, so it's, and we've had to turn around the RV in some very, very tight places, um, which is kind of a little discouraging thinking that the truck actually doesn't turn quite as tightly. So yeah, we'd have to 
make more We'd ha yeah. forward and back motions to get uh, turned around on a dead end road. <laughs> so that's not as much fun. Um, so that was a little bit of a surprise, but yeah, the Mercedes drives very, very well. And, and Winnebago in general has done a phenomenal job on it. So overall winner? The Winnebago view. The RV. And so these are just our categories that we find uh, that we experience a lot when we're traveling that are of importance. Now the difference with all these categories is just because you get more categories in one favor or another doesn't mean that that's the vehicle you should choose because realistically certain things are going to be more important to you yeah. than other things and that's really a personal thing so you really have to decide what of those different things is most important to you and kind of buy the proper rig for how you're going to use it and how your needs are going to align with it. So why did we decide to go down to the truck for people that are wondering? So the concept with the truck is really to increase the capability. So that, that was really the big, yeah. um, and the option to use the truck mm -hmm. separate from the camper. The versatility. So the versatility and capability was a big thing. Um, the rest of it we kind of knew was going to be kind of uh, negatives with it. Right. So the real bombshell is we're selling both of them. So <laughs> we'll keep you posted on what the next vehicle is and what we buy. So stay tuned. Thanks for watching this video. Be sure to subscribe if you have any interest in what we're talking about and you're curious about what our new travel vehicle will be. We will share that in an upcoming video. Yeah. Thanks for watching. Thank you so much. <laughs> we'll bleep this out. <laughs>